Actually, it looks like that. If this is an array, 0, 1, 2, 3, it has its address 100, 100, 200, 800, 12. When we are just declaring this is an array of pointers, means it stores the address of this A, this stores the address of A1, A plus 2, like that. So that's why this is an array of pointers which stores the address of an array. Now you are just BTRs, here BTRs, 200, because we are just BTR equals to P, and we are just cluster BTR plus plus, so BTR is now, this is a implemented, so it is 204. So PTR minus P is 204 minus 200 by divided by 4, so it is 1 because P is 200. And this evaluated like this, so this correct answer 1, 1, 1. Okay? Now the thing is, you just, I just keep the concept of this type of pointers. They may ask what do you mean by tangent pointer. Okay? A tangent is not a serious issue, it's a simple thing. That's a pointer which is pointing to a memory location that has been deleted. That's in the dynamic pointer. That means we are declaring it by pointer by using value and before free call PTR becomes a dynamic pointer. Until and unless we will just give the free PTR and when the PTR equals to none, that's no more a dynamic pointer. A pointer to a pointing to a memory location that has been deleted. That's this called a dynamic pointer. Until and unless we will specify it with a null value. Of course you know about the void pointer. Void pointer is a special type of pointer because of mellow, callow, all its returns are void type point. Because you can map void pointer with any type of data type. That's the main importance of the void pointer is that void pointer is a specific pointer type, a pointer that points to some data location in storage, which does not have any specific type. That means if we want to points uh, like character data type to a void pointer, it will become a character pointer. If the integer data type is integer pointer, so that's why you can just map with the void pointer with any type of data type. But the problem with the dereferencing, you cannot directly dereference the pointer. What do you mean by dereferencing? Dereference you must start with like that. That's why we want to retrieve the value. Then you are just assigning void pointer is declared like start P is a void pointer. And then we are just assigning pointer with the integer data type. Then you want to dereference it. If you want to just dereference it without the type casting, then it will become a problem. So that's why white pointer cannot be dereferenced. And it can be typed by the type casting. And pointer dereferencing is not possible on pointer due to the lack of country value. Like that in that program, you see the integer x equals to 4, float y equals to 5.5. We are declaring a void pointer. And this is the type of void, but PTR can be stored the address of x. Okay? We are not doing this type of pointer. But when you want to print it, we have to do the type just. Okay? That's the problem. When you want to print this particular value, then you have to type just it. But before assigning, you need not to basically. You are declaring a void pointer and you are just integer pointer to be mapped with the, this void pointer. It is a very easy. So that's why the void pointer is as uh, some utility like malloc and calloc will return always void so that's why you can map it with any integer data type but when you are dereferencing it you have to do it by using type custom okay so if you just want to float so you have to type custom with the float variable and there is another which is called null pointer null pointer actually what does it mean this is pointing nothing in case if we don't have address to be assigned a pointer then we have to simply use it now okay now actually gives the zero that's why if we are printing it now, we are just printing the pointer, so that's just become zero. If we are not defining the now, it may have some content, some garbage value. So this is the difference between now. And of course, now versus uninitialized pointer, like uninitialized pointer store an undefined value, but the now pointer store a defined value, which is zero. And void pointer, now pointer is a value, but void pointer is a type. There is also another pointer which is called void pointer. That is point a pointer which has not been initialized to anything. Like when I am declaring it, just starting. That's just a call the body pointer. It's nothing but, but they will ask some body You know everything, but you don't know that particular name. That's the problem. Wild pointer is nothing that it is just starting. It's the wild pointer because which is not initialized to anything. That's why. When you are initialized to anything, it's not becomes a wild pointer. And there is also some functions pointer, okay? 
function pointer in the function can be used as an also pointer. Like here we are declaring functions and in this element we are declaring this is a function pointer. This void star function pointer thing is that we are giving a first packet within this function. But the thing is that if we just remove this, then it becomes void star function pointer. So it is a function which is written type be void. So that's why when you are declaring function pointer, please just write a first packet after function. So it is a void pointer with this parameter integer and actually functions will store the address, first address, where from the function will start. It will just store the first address of where from the function start. And we are just invoking function by using this passing this value pin, then it will read the symbol pin. But the thing is, that's the reason that, uh, that we are just giving this bracket. Because if we are not giving this bracket, that means it is a declaration to a function that returns a point pointer. It has a different meaning from this. Okay? And of course, now like normal pointer, a function pointer points to the code, not data. Okay? That's the starting address of function. And function pointer stores the starts of the executable code. And also, it do not allocate or deallocate memory by using function pointer. And also, there is an example by where we can show that if we not use this and version side, it will also works in case of function pointer. You just see, uh, because at that moment, if you don't know the function pointer, it is actually very difficult to recapture the idea. But I just introduce function pointer. If you go through the slide, you will understand clearly that what you mean by actually function pointer. You need to know everything, just to know the function pointer, white pointer, and white pointer, not pointer, that type of things. So this one is one of the array of functions pointer. We can say that in array of function pointer also we created like here we are using a function pointer and array with add, subtract, multiply. If we just give the choice, it will give go to the corresponding functions. So this is the functions array of function pointer. And function pointer it is a base like an array. Also. Yeah, this is the last concept of uh, memory, memory leak. That means uh, memory leak occurs when programmer create a memory from the heap section because we know when we just use the static array, it will be the memory will be allocated either from the stack or the data sections. But when you are using the memory using calloc or memory, it will be allocated from the heap section. So it is the uh, uh, is when you are allocating some memory from the heap section, you should free the memory after the operations. If you are not using this free, then this becomes then called a memory leak. Because any other program will not we use this memory, so that's why this is known as a memory leak. And this is the one of the questions asking you need to view that. In 2D arranged in dynamic memory allocation like that. If you want to try to the first column, there is the first row. Like you, you can know the matrix can be 3 cross 3 or 4 cross 4, 4 cross 2, right? But if you want to create a matrix such that, that the first row will three has 3 columns, second row with 5 columns, third row with 2 columns, right? Okay? So that's why you can create it by using 2D dynamic memory. This is a very important concept like that. P is pointing to this array and this will be, this one is the actually two dimensional array but the first row contain three columns, the second row is contain five or six columns or third row. Okay? You can do it by dynamic compression. How? Just give the number of rows, these rows will be stored at the, this P and then you are just using this for loop up to this loop and give the number of columns. And this also create dynamic value. Okay? By using this simple code, you can create it. It can be asked several times in the interview that you have to create a 2D array using dynamic memory allocations where the first row contains 3 columns, second row contains 5 columns, and other that. So by using this two, one is P is mellow, you are just taking it good rows and just continue the loop up to this number of rows and you are just take the number of columns dynamically and create using this. Okay? Yeah.